Hey, it's Todd with Defense and Safety. I want to do a quick uh, video here, basically explaining the sharpness scale, so degrees of sharpness. Um, a lot, Obviously, a lot of people have knife channels, and a lot of people own knives and enjoy knives, so I wanted to help kind of explain to people how they can tell how sharp their knife is. So if everybody's familiar with a bell curve, what I've done is I've created the degrees of sharpness, and so if you've looked at a bell curve, you know, the average, most knives are going to be here in the middle, and then uh, the duller knives will fall to the left and the sharper knives to the right. So I just wanted to kind of start with helping people understand uh, what condition their knife is in or uh, what condition they should get their knife in. So starting kind of at the far end of the spectrum of sharpening, of sharpness, comes uh, what I have here, I don't know if you can read it, but it's sharp stick. Which essentially, when you get a super, super, super dull knife that's really lost all its edge, it's basically become a sharp stick. Not a good knife to own. The next is just plain dull. Now this is a knife that some people, maybe that don't own knives, would still consider sharp. But it's still pretty dull, uh, or dull uh, in my book and probably in your book. Now... Coincidentally enough, if you've ever used some uh, chef's knives over at your friend's house or maybe even your own, they typically fall into this category. They're dull. They'll still cut, you know, a head of lettuce or a carrot, but they're not sharp. So the next degree up from dull is kind of sharp. Some people refer to this as pretty sharp. So kind of sharp is where the layman or someone who doesn't own knives would consider this a sharp knife. Again, we're really in that kind of cutlery range around the kitchen knives. Certainly not a knife that you'd want to carry in your pocket and use for anything as a tool. And then we come to the biggest and most prevalent category, which is just sharp. Now a sharp knife, you know, could be the edge that you get from the factory, could be a slightly uh, used knife with a factory edge. So it's sharp, I think most people would, would agree there's not going to be much argument, is that sharp or not. But it is probably not as sharp as a knife could get, or that you may want it. So the next degree of sharpness is crazy sharp. Now, the reason it's called crazy sharp is you hand this to somebody who doesn't really understand knives, and they touch this and they go, oh my god, you know, that's crazy. Who needs a knife that sharp? That's crazy. You're crazy to have a knife that sharp. So that's where the term crazy sharp comes from. Now the next level of sharpness, this is really getting into where we all probably want our knives to be, is scary sharp. And that's where even someone like myself, or probably someone like you, touches the edge or cuts something with it, and we go, that's scary sharp. Because we know enough to respect the edge of this knife. We know that this knife is beyond what normal people consider sharp. And that's where you get scary sharp. And now the last degree of sharpness has two way, ways of calling it. One is J. Davis 882 sharp, and the other is hair whittling sharp. And now we get to the point of my video. I just got my knives back from John, whose YouTube channel is J. Davis 882. I see you probably saw his video where he showed off the knives, kind of a before and after of uh, the knives I sent in. So I sent in my Zero Tolerance, I sent in my Sage, I sent in my uh, Paramilitary, I sent in this Benchmade um, 710, and I sent in my old trusty, um, this is an old Benchmade um I think it's mo it's a 910. It's model off the old uh, Striker models. Um, so we've got the Zero Tolerance, which is the 551. This is the uh, L-Max. Uh, these two are both in S30V. This is in D2, and this is in uh, ATS-34, which is the Japanese version of uh, 154CM. And I just want to give you guys a quick update. They just got just opened the box. I just got it out of the mailbox. He sent them on Friday, uh, flat rate box shipment, 
and uh, insured, and they came on Monday. And when I sent to him, I sent them on a Friday, and he got them on a Monday. So it was really uh, a week's turnaround time, uh, a week, and I guess the weekend, so 10 days. And I've been checking out all the edges, and um, I'm not going to cut with them because he already did, but they are beyond scary sharp. They really are. Um, this was the toothier edge, and honestly, when you feel it with your hand along this edge, that toothier edge feels sharper almost um, than these polished edges, but they all are finally, you know, where you want them sharp which is just outside of scary sharp, which means they're going to do the job that you need them to do, whether that's uh, more of an EDC type roll, uh, whether you're using more of a Tonto edge to uh, pierce with, or you know whether you're taking something with a nice recurve like this to do some slicing. Uh, these knives are good to go, and I highly recommend his service. He is a perfectionist. And I'll give you a little tip how I knew he was good. How I knew I needed to send him my knives. First of all, he does tons of videos on knife sharpening where he will test the sharpness of a knife, the durability of a steel to hold its edge, and then he'll resharpen them. And you can tell he does a really great job and he's very particular. But also in the types of knives he owns, he owns great knives, but he gets a little worked up when he likes a knife. He wants to own more than one. And that's where I said, and no offense to you, John, he's anal retentive. And that's a good trait when it comes to sharpening because I have no patience. I do not have the patience to sharpen a knife. Every time I've tried, I've taken it from probably the kind of sharp and even sharp down to in getting into the dull. And even I've taken them all the way down to sharp sticks. So uh, I've just not perfected my technique or had the patience and John has uh, more than perfected that, and he's got the right equipment. And for the price he charges uh, and the time he puts into them, uh, you know, you could send them out to someone else, and they're probably going to spend 10 to 15 minutes. They're going to use a belt to, you know, and then they might strop it or a little bit of a stone, but they're not going to spend more than 10 or 15 minutes on a knife tops. And John said he spent over an hour on each of these and from what I've seen looking at the edges of these uh, they are extremely well done he centered the edges which is another huge thing um, so that you know the bevel if you ever look on your knife on each side what you might notice is that when you see the bevel here it might be a little thicker than here which means you know they've just cut the edge a little you know if this is centered they've they've cut it a little you know more to one side so it, it's it's not centered, and so he centered those, and uh, I'm super happy. I missed these knives a lot, and I'm really excited to start carrying them again. These are some of my favorites and my most EDC'd, next to my um, uh, zero tolerance 350 and my um, uh, new Emerson CQC 15. So those are these are kind of all my EDC knives, and now I've got more than just two to EDC, and I'll be loving these every day. So I just wanted to give you guys an update and help you understand, you know, where your knives stack up in the uh, sharpness bell curve. Uh, again, you know, I think if you're watching this channel and you care enough and you've gotten this far and you're still watching, um, you know, you're a scary sharp kind of guy or gal. And I'm telling you, you might as well go to Hair Whittling Sharp. Because once you go there, Scary Sharp isn't even sharp enough. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll annotate his channel down in the, or I'll put his channel down in the description in case you don't know who he is. You should follow him. You should watch his videos. All right, thanks again.